大家好，我们接着讲古代机器人。上一小节我们讲了达芬奇和他做的机器人骑士和机器人狮子等东西。那么咱们接着随着历史进程往前走，到了十七、十八世纪，有什么样的机器人呢？这个时候呢，机器人的发展呢有了一个变化，因为随着各方面技术的进步，原来做的东西呢都比较大型，现在呢都向小型化、观赏性去发展。比如咱们看这个例子，这个个小型的机器爬虫，它能够在地上走来走去，甚至打开翅膀。我们看一段视频。With these new smaller mechanisms, automata changed. They no longer had to be rooted to the spot. <音>那么呢？还有人做了可以唱歌的小鸟，这个呢也是非常的小，小巧精密，做的非常的紧凑。我们看这个视频。Thanks to the miniaturized components, automata could now simulate new kinds of movements and even make complex and naturalistic sounds. 更进一步，有人觉得只做一个不解气，我能不能做一个场景，模拟整个一个城市的生活过程？所以，在这个海尔布伦宫有这么一个机械剧院，很多人去海尔布伦宫留场的话，我不知道留意过这个地方没有？它里面呢，就模拟了一个整个这个城市的这个生活这个过程，有的有人在宰羊，有人在擦鞋。有人在各种各样的官员、市民，非常的繁华。咱们去看这样一个视频。It would be created especially for the Hellbrunn Palace, a fabulously extravagant summer retreat designed to satisfy the private pleasures of the ruling classes. This was a place of lavish excess. Its gardens filled with strange devices designed to entertain and titillate. But one machine surpassed them all in scale, ambition, and technical sophistication. An automaton in the form of an entire working city. As the machine comes to life, almost 200 figurines begin to move. The city becomes a kind of vast mechanical opera. Beneath, water pressure turns a wheel that is connected via a series of gears to the entire machine. Here, this metalwork acts like a set of instructions, guiding each of the figures to perform their actions at different intervals. A 
Above the mechanism, the workers execute their tasks perfectly, mechanically, automatically. Meanwhile, an elegant and aristocratic audience keeps watch with the most minimal of movement. This is a prince's vision of a utopian society. The Helbron Mechanical Theatre perfectly encapsulates the contradiction at the heart of all 18th century automata. These were machines built as entertainment for a fabulously wealthy court society. But their mechanical ingenuity, their artfully carved exteriors, their very soul came from poorly paid artisan workers. What's more, the creativity of those workers would revolutionize the automata so beloved by the aristocracy. Nomo 把这个动物和人类进行解剖但是这个呢没有保存下来我们可以看一个相关的视频 One man in particular began to pioneer the simulation of living things His name was Jacques de Vaucanson and he succeeded in building some of the most beautiful and complex clockwork beings of the era Vaucanson was convinced that there was no significant difference between humans and machines. He spent his nights attending anatomy classes, studying in extreme and gory detail the way the body worked. By looking closely at human anatomy, Vaucanson hoped that he could reconstitute it using clockwork. His ideas were part of a novel way of thinking about the human body that began to emerge in the 18th century. Vaucanson's contemporaries began to see that the way in which the human body works is essentially automatic. Automatic is the key word in the way they describe what humans do. So here's a writer in the 1740s, a friend of Vaucanson. He asks, doesn't your body leap back in terror when you come upon an unexpected precipice? Don't your eyelids close automatically at the threat of a blow? Don't your lungs automatically work? he says, continually, like a bellows. And it was exactly those ideas that Vaucanson would use to engineer a machine that could simulate life itself. Keep. 
那么以上这些呢，就是在达芬奇之后，随着科幻技术的进步，出现的一些自动玩偶和自动机器人。谢谢。